Now, a guy who kind of makes me feel bad about myself, and I think the number one reason, Jill, is when he comes in the studio, he's got some huge pipes, this guy. <laughs> Yeah, quite literally, Andy. And I'm sure you have a bit of calf envy, too. Rich Hesketh joining us here this morning. Uh, most everyone wants to feel strong and steady on their feet, and there are ways to improve your balance and stability through exercise. So Rich is back to show us a technique that is going to give you more strength, more control, using water and pipes. So this is actually yeah. kind of a DIY project. Well, it is. And, and you, a few years ago when Chris Butler was with us with the, the hockey club in the Calgary Flames, he said, my trainers put together these things and we've never really had any protocol around them. We just play around with them, which were PVC pipe half filled with water. Okay. Obviously you put ends on them so they don't leak. Um, but they create some instability with, with any exercise. And as athletes or as people generally, most of the mistakes we make are from the core. Mm -hmm. So when you're making movement patterns, you lose your balance. Most of the mistake you make is not being engaged through your core. So right. pulling your belly button back to your spine, yeah. holding your posture, and being strong. When we say stand strong, it's all part from the core. So you can incorporate this into sports-specific movement or life-specific movements and just move around and change things around. I've used this with uh, golfers. Uh, hockey players, basketball players, so running sports, jumping sports, gliding sports can all benefit from creating instability from your center of gravity up, okay. not just from your ankles. So it's so movement patterning around that. And I don't want to hit you, so I'm going to move Please don't. off. So if we think rotational, yeah. so if we're a golfer, you can move through ranges. And as the water sloshes, you can create instability through that. So now, just again, in holding this, you're engaging the core to start? Well, yeah, because you're holding on engage first. And because this is sliding all over the place, it's some work to hold on to. Now, I don't have handles on this, uh -huh. so you've got to work that much harder to hold on to it. Right. Okay? So the other thing we're working on, too, is if you think about a running sport, you can put it on your back or hold it straight out in front of you. You can see how it's wobbling around. Uh -huh. You can do all your A's and B's and C's around it, create that instability but you have to stay engaged. Right. So let's take it to a skating position. So even if you're holding on to a stick, we're holding on to this kind of position now. So now we've got to hold our position, but also have that kind of stability. And it's not actually adding that much weight, is it? No, this it's is just about, the unpredictability. Yeah, this is moving. 13, 14 pounds. Mm -hmm. We have a bigger one that's six feet high. Okay. And that's 16 pounds. Now, now the, do you choose a height based on your own height? On your strength. On your strength. More on your strength and your stability. You can also cut them to four foot mm -hmm. or anything in between. So anything like that can create that instability. If you're a jumping athlete, again, you can hold this in front or across your back and do a step up with knee drive. And you can see how you're having to work. And in a single leg support, if you're taking off in this position, if you don't have balance as a jumper, right. you're in big trouble. Yeah. So in those areas where you're trying to be as specific as possible in your sport or everyday life, mm -hmm. they're ultimate, there's no end to the number of exercises you can do. Okay. So I've just put this together. Um, there's another product out there called the Viper, right. which is shorter with handles. So it's a little bit easier, a little more, but you can add some more weight to it. Right. This is just a way to do it yourself and have an opportunity to change some things around so that even in, and hopefully I don't hit anything, you can go into a chopping mo motion. Now, oh, yeah, I may be chopping wood this weekend. I don't know. But in this position, you're creating stability, core stability on your feet, some balance, coordination, and everything. So really, it's, it's a really versatile tool. And I stumbled on it, right. and I've been playing with it. And now there's all kinds of you walk over hurdles. You can do all kinds of things on it. And you could tell that your heart rate is up. I'm going to try yeah. this on for a Yeah, second. hold on to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Even simply squatting with that, if you hold it across your back like you're doing squats, you can, you can do a squat. You can feel how it wobbles you around. Upping your training to the next level. Yeah. Okay, I might start with the four-foot varietal. Yeah, I mean, it's best <laughs> to start with the lower one. Work on your core standing up. You don't always have to lie down and do sit-ups. Yeah, that's great. And the stronger your core is, the less likely you are to get injured, especially come winter time when we're doing all those compensations on the ice. Absolutely. Excellent. Thanks very much, My Rich. Pleasure. Always great tips.